So this one is pretty straightforward again. It just says find the surface area of the figure. Step number one, you're just going to identify what it is. So this is a figure that's made up of more than one figure, and that's what they're saying is a composite. So this com it says this solid is composed of a cylinder and a hemisphere. The surface area will be the surface area of the cylinder minus its top circle plus the curved surface of the hemisphere. Identify the formula for each of these areas. So what they're saying is the same thing we said about the prism with the pyramid on top, you don't need the top circle because it's connected to the hemisphere. So when you're really thinking about what would you paint if this was a completely solid shape, the formula is underneath. They're saying the formula for cylinder minus one circle. So the regular formula for a cylinder is to say the curved part that's in the, that's the height and then a circle on top and a circle on the bottom. So they're adjusting that formula to say minus one of the circles. So then underneath of that, they have what the formula is. So after you identify what the shape is, then you need to get the formula for that shape. So what they have is the pi times the diameter times the height, and then they have two pi r squared because that's the regular formula for cylinder for the surface area. But then they're saying minus pi r squared because you don't need the top circle. So what they've done is just condense the formula to be pi times the diameter times the height plus pi r squared. That's the bottom circle. So once you identify what you need, then you're going to substitute. So they have um, 12 as the diameter, 15 as the height, and then half of 12 or 6 as the radius. And they're getting about 678.6 centimeters. For the hemisphere, typically you would have been doing four, um, let's see, oh, that's on a different page, of course, right? So going over to math is fun real quick, clicking on geometry. I know most people have done these already. Solid, and then we did the some of the common shapes. So typically, the formula has four in it. And we said you can kind of think of that as like up, down, left, right, coming from that middle radius. But because you only need a, hem a hemisphere, that's why this one is only um, two. So you have two pi r squared because you just need half of the sphere. So you have a choice. You can just drop it down to two, or you can do what we were doing with the circle or with the sphere um, and just do your regular formula and then divide it by two. So as long as you know that you're taking half, that's the goal. You're going to have about 226.2. And then the idea, whenever you're doing any kind of composite shape, is to figure out one shape figure out the other shape, and then add them together at the end. So this is how the surface area is coming out to be 904.8. So what we're going to do today in class is practice this formula with uh, number one, this think about math. There's only one problem here. And then we're also going to do this one that's in the margin where they're talking about um, this tower. So. This one is almost exactly like the example. <laughs> so we're going to just take like three minutes because this is um, surface area. It's the same shape from example number six. But like I heard Zoila was saying, now you have to figure out the height. So what we said is if ever you get perimeter, area, volume, surface area, you're basically going to do the complementary part of the formula. So I'm going to say um, we can do a quick breakout just to talk about what you think you would do, and then we'll do it together. So let me do a quick breakout room. Put me with this art. <laughs> <laughs> 
So just three minutes. Hi, Josette, how you doing? Can you hear me? Everyone's in a breakout room. <laughs> They'll be back in a couple seconds. So let's take a look at this one. So we're saying that um, this is the same as example number six. But now they're just telling you the surface area already. So what you're saying is the hemisphere plus the cylinder is going to equal what they're telling you in the problem. So now you have to figure out what is the hemisphere. So 
what you can see is that the diameter is a 10. So for the surface area of the hemisphere, you're doing that um, 2 pi r squared for surface area. And then you're saying that the r would be how much? Yes, because you're going to say that the Six. radius by itself is just 5. So when you do 5 times 5, you get 25. And then when you say, let's see, we can go to the calculator. So do I, um, so you have about 157. You had the 25. So if you keep writing your formula, you're doing 2 times pi times 25. So when you do that, you get 157. And this is, again, about. So the hemisphere is 157. The cylinder, you're doing the same formula that was in example number 6. So you've got pi times the diameter times the height plus pi r squared for one of the bottom circles. So what you're really saying is the diameter is 10, so you're going to keep that one. So pi times 10, and you don't know the height, so you're going to just leave the letter h. You already figured out the radius was 5, so you're going to put that and replace in, in the space of r. Oops. So now for this one, it's the same. So now you're saying that you really have 31.4 times the height plus 78, about 78.5. So when you're doing this, what you did is you figured out the cylinder, which is right here, and you figured out the hemisphere. And you already know the total because they're telling you that in the word problem. So now what you want to do is say 157 plus 31.4 times the height plus 78.5. So in regular algebra, you would want to add the 78.5 and the 157 because those are just numbers uh, without any variable. So this just goes back to your algebra, which we can go back to the calculator and say the 157, and you might have a decimal depending on what you use for pi, plus 78.5 equals 235.5. So what you have when you add up just the numbers is 235.5 plus 31.4 H equals the amount that they're giving you in the word problem. So now you're just subtracting the 235.5 from both sides. And then you're going to have zero on this side. 31.4 is all that's left. Oops. And 
And then dividing both sides by a 31.4, you just have H. And when you do, do the division, let me share the calculator again. So if you have the 612.3, minus 235.5 and then divided by 31.4 you have 12. So the answer is going to be C that the height had to be 12 in order for you to get 612.3. Daisy was was right. You had 12, Daisy? Yeah, yeah. So this is really just um, a review on your algebra. You know, so this is why we said they're saying the test is 35% algebra, 35% geometry, but every now and then something's go going to overlap. So geometry is just this idea about shapes that are on the planet. But when you look at a formula, as soon as you see that there's an equal sign, it comes back to your algebra skills. So you do have to figure out what is that uh, equation going to be? What is the sentence going to be? And if they tell you that end result, which is normally capital letters, like P is a capital letter for perimeter, A is a capital letter for area, SA is the capital letter for surface area, B is a capital letter for volume, when they tell you that you're more than likely going to be doing division for all the ones that are multiplication, or you're going to be doing subtraction for perimeter. So this is again, like what you want to be thinking when you read the problem is some type of predicting. So when they start out with the surface area of this solid is, then you're thinking, okay, I'm going to end up doing division towards the end because the regular area formula is about, you know, multiplication. So, so another prediction, another prediction is could be like we have the uh, the other uh, example, the first example that it says uh, twelve uh, in the height was fifteen, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but and then this just the comparing just is like it's the bottom is ten, so the the other one, the height has to be 12 because it cannot be 24 or nine right. or six. So it has to be 12 without doing it everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you definitely want to think that. Um, the only challenge is that if some, if things are a little bit close, you're going to have to make the guess or see if you can work out the algebra because sometimes things are not drawn to scale. So it can be hard to look at it. But I think that, you know, it's the same as we had with that question about the isosceles triangle. There are, there is some, they, if they show you a figure, it should be, it should make sense. <laughs> so now it, it might not be drawn to scale exactly. Like if you really got out rulers and measured, but it should be making sense, like you're saying. Yep. If you're looking at a base that's 10 in diameter, then it doesn't seem like the height would be less than that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right? Yep. So you do want to say, that, you know, like we were saying yesterday, the majority of your test is multiple choice, like well over half. So I'm saying the majority, as in almost all, <laughs> they throw on, some people might have two open-ended, some people might have four, but those questions are worth the same thing as a multiple choice question. So sometimes people feel like an open-ended question is worth more like on the essay, but that's not true. So when you're doing math, like we said, and you have multiple choice, you wanna to stick to, I, I understand the question and I can make a prediction. If you don't understand the question, you're guessing just to not leave something blank. 
Mm -hmm. So then when it comes to guessing, you do want to say to yourself, what would make the best guess if you're familiar with it? So if it's algebra or if it's geometry or if it's statistics, one of the chapters that we've done, then you want to make like an educated guess. If it's calculus or trigonometry or something that we've never done, then you want to make a random guess and not put the mental energy into it. If that makes sense. So like this next one is open-ended. So in a test situation, you can flag it immediately and do it last, just so that you're using your energy in the best way, like getting through all the multiple choice, making sure you complete the test, and then coming back around to an open-ended question. Unless it's completely obvious, you know, when you read it, then you can get it out of the way. But if it's something where you're going to have to do um, figuring, I would say just do it last, because you'll know that, you're com that you've completed the test. Mm -hmm. So this one is, again, talking about prior knowledge. So it's an important step in making sense of problems is recognizing the prior knowledge required to solve the problem. And that's what we're saying about reading the question and understanding what you need. So when they say find the surface area of the figure or something like that, you have to say, do I even know what these two figures are? Right? So there's so always some type of background knowledge or prior knowledge that you need. We also said that the best prior knowledge in geometry is all of the flat shapes because it at least gives you a starting point of what you're thinking about. So even if those are the only ones that you can really memorize, you'll have at least a better, you know, ability to make the predictions and have the prior knowledge. So this one is a tower. And we're saying that things in, in real life are supposed to be coming down to the majority of these shapes. So this tower is gonna be a cone at the top and then a cylinder as the base. And it's telling you the cylinder has a radius of 20 feet and a height of 12 feet. The cone has the same radius as the cylinder and a slant height of 25 feet. The formula for the surface area of the curved surface of a cone is pi r times the slant height. So now this is how your problems are sometimes, where, again, they're going to give you the formula. So it really just becomes, can you use the formula when they give it to you? So now coming down to the bottom, what additional formula that is not given in the problem is necessary to find the surface area of the tower? Surface uh, two R squared. You need the surface area of the cylinder. So, like in a problem like this, this one might be considered more challenging because it's a tower, right? If they gave you all this information that was in the top they're giving you the radius and the height and the slant height and the formula for the cone. The part that you don't have in the problem is the formula for the cylinder, right? So everybody's agreeing with me <laughs> on that one. It is. Yeah. So it goes back to the same thing where you're saying, what are the two shapes? There's a cone and there's a cylinder. They gave you the formula for the cone, but they didn't give you the formula for the cylinder. So what you're saying to yourself is, it comes back to the flat shape, that if you know that a cylinder is a circle at its base, then all you're doing is adding height. So the first question is, what additional information or what additional formula that's not given in the problem is necessary? The Additional formula is the one for a cylinder. So what you have is that they're giving you um, pi r times the slant height for the cone, but you have to do pi r squared times the height for the cylinder. Mm -hmm. So the cone surface area is going to be pi. What's the the radius that they're already telling you is 20. 
and the slant height was 25. So you're just replacing like you were, or substituting like we did on the math is fun algebra index. Then the surface area for the cylinder is going to be pi. And then you need the radius again. And then you need the height, which they said was 12. So now this comes back to being ooh, that's the, just the algebra again. So 20 times 25, 500 times pi, uh, 1570. So it's about the 1570. Now you've got, um, oh wait. Did I do? I have a. Oh, you don't. I don't think you need to square. Let me see. Ten. I have ten. Three. Three point fourteen times uh, ten. Thirty-one point four. Because if you square, it comes out like if you square the fifteen seventy, it'll come out like thirty nine sixty two. I didn't. I didn't square that one. I just leave it like that, and then I yeah. add. I add. I add the cone. Yeah, you don't need to square it because um, the top is not there. So it should be like. I just left it like that, and then I add uh, the thirty thirty one point four. So because you're just going to do the base, um, so this, the last question is, what is the surface area of the tower? You actually don't need to do the whole surface area of the cylinder. So I wrote the whole formula, but, oops. You actually only need the, the middle piece. Right. So in the, in the real world, in a tower, you're not going to talk about the floor, which is on the ground, and you're not going to talk about the top. Oh, OK. So you only need the curved surface, which let me see where that is. That's just the 2 times pi times r times h. So that's actually in the last section. Um, on page 236. So just the part that you would, like we were saying that it could be like the label of your soup can without the two circle parts. So just pi, r, and the height, and then the two in front of pi. So because you don't need the top that's connected to the, the cone and you don't need the bottom, you're really only doing the surface area of that rectangular part that's curved around. It's 14 times, it's 12 instead of, uh, I put 20 and, okay, so I have to switch to 12. Oops. So now you're just saying 20 times 12. Forty. So these are so it comes out thirty. 70, something like that. Yeah, and if you're rounding, you're going to end up with like 30, 79, 30, maybe if you, depends on what you use for pi, you might get 30, you know, 78 or 30, 80. So as long as you're somewhere around there, then that would be correct. So this one, I'm not sure what I used for pi, but I got 1507.96. I got 
So the two things I'm adding up is like a 1570 plus 1508. So you could have gotten a little bit higher um, here, depending on what you use for pi. Maybe you would have rounded up to 1571 with your decimal. So we're saying 3078, 3079, depending on what you round it up to. But you're supposed to just be saying you're definitely adding the cone and the, just the rectangular part of the cylinder. So I'm going to put back to that one so everybody can see where that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's actually in the last section that we did. The um the two um seven point three. This area. Yeah. Area base plus um at a surface. So this one right here. If you just were to like unfold the shape, because this one was is a real life tower, you don't need the pi r squared. That is the circle, because that's where the, the cone is connected and you don't need the ground where the bottom of the tower would be. So in a structure like a building, you would only need this middle part, which was the two pi r times the height. So the surface area would have been to add up the circle on the bottom, add up the circle on the top, and then add up this lateral surface. For the tower, they're saying really you only need the lateral surface because you're not concerned about the top. That would be inside. Um, and then it depends on what it looks like inside. And then you don't need the bottom because it would be on the ground. So kind of like the time that they, we did the, the word problem about the tent, and you only were going to do the canvas front, back, left, and right, and not do the floor because you're going to be on the grass. You have to take in consideration what that, the shape is that they're talking about. And I feel like these two are probably the most challenging ones that we've done. But for this one in the core practice, in the margin, they're saying that you might get information in your word problem, like here, where it's giving you the surface area of the cone. But you're saying again, step one all the time is to identify what the figure actually is. So this figure is a cone and a cylinder. So what you have to say to yourself is, they're expecting me to know the shape or to know the formula of the cylinder. They gave me the formula of the cone. And again, the formula for the cylinder, we're just saying we're not really memorizing um, all of it. But we're saying that we understand the, the basis of it, which is the 2 pi r, and then the fact that there's height to it as a 3D shape. So now we are finally at the end. And we're going to go through the vocabulary. And maybe like one and two of the skill review. So this one is not too, too bad, I don't think. This is just building, because this is the end of the chapter, building on vocabulary that we've already kind of talked about. So number one is saying that a figure that's flat and only has two dimensions would be what? Two dimension? Mention. Dimensional, right? What is half of a sphere? Um, ha uh, hemis hemisphere. <laughs> A hemisphere. So this is again just like for better understanding. Sometimes they might say half of the sphere, sometimes they might actually use the word hemisphere. But hemisphere is a word that you probably might recognize from social studies or just from or maybe even science like talking about the earth as a sphere. A lot of times we say northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, you know, when we're talking about the earth. So now you're learning that word or how it's applied just to 
mathematics, like to a formula. So if, you, if they give you the formula for a sphere, but you're talking about a hemisphere, you have to understand that you need to cut that in half. And then number three, a two-dimensional figure that's made up of two or more different shapes. Composite solid. Composite solid. That is composite figure. So what we want to say is the two-dimensional one is a flat or a figure. But then number four, the three-dimensional is the solid. So when they say solid, they're talking about something that you can hold, you know, in your hand, but that is going to have 3D. So number two is composite figure? Uh -huh. And then number four is composite solid. And all you're thinking is the figures are two-dimensional flat shapes, solids are three-dimensional objects. And last but not least, number five is three-dimensional. So a three-dimensional figure is an object that has three dimensions, usually length, width, and height. Dimension, dimensional. So now looking at number or looking at the skill review, there are four questions in a skill review. So what we're going to do is do one and two and then say that these six questions or eight questions are kind of like for, for homework. So you're just gonna go through them. If you can do them, you can do them. If you can't do them, then you're just gonna skip that one and bring a question to class tomorrow. Hopefully, because this is just gonna be um, eight problems, we should be able just to make it through the eight problems tomorrow. And then depending on how it goes, we're gonna try out the task, um, task test book. So the exercise book, that's more like the test. So looking at this one, it says the community garden picture is going to be used for question number one and for question number two. So you're looking at the dimensions first, just like when they say consider this graph or consider this diagram. Hopefully this one came out a little bit better, <laughs> but it looks like three different kinds of vegetables are planted in three rows, right? So you're still looking at what does the shape look like, which is this kind of um, semicircle on the right side and then a rectangular kind of shape on the left side. Then you can see what's labeled is 10 feet and uh, on the left and then 16 feet across the bottom. So you wanna take a look at your figure if there is one before you even go into doing the problem. And that really would only take you a couple of seconds but you want to just see what information is there again. So now number one is saying fencing costs $12 per foot. To the nearest dollar, how much will it cost to put a fence around the entire garden? So now that you know the story with what you already analyzed from the picture, what formula do you think you need? Base on height. There we go. You said base times the height? Yeah, because um, I, I only had only had, I had a, I had the base, but I had the height, but I don't have the rest of it. Well, you don't want to look at just the figure. That's why we're analyzing the figure first the dimension. and then reading the question, right? So for the idea of fencing, what, what would fencing be the out perimeter. of all of the um, geometry formulas? That's the perimeter. Right, so fencing would just be perimeter. So this is why you wanna, you wanna look at the information that they give you, but because they have a 10 and a 16, doesn't mean you wanna just multiply. So, and you don't know, you might have to do that for example number two, because you are gonna use the same figure for two questions. But for example number one, you wanna look at the fact that they gave you a garden. What are the two shapes that it's made out of? The semicircle and the rectangle. And then what are the dimensions? But then when you actually read the question and it says fencing, that automatically, 
you need to make that be the border idea. So anytime that there's a fence, a trim, we said um, a picture frame, anything that's going along the outside, like the, the other example was a track of the park, right, in this same shape. So you're using all of these examples as practice. So that if it's, oh, someone's running around the track. Oh, someone's putting up fence around the garden. Oh, someone's putting a picture frame around the painting. All of those are the idea of perimeter. So now when you read the word fencing and you think about perimeter, what operation is that? So the only operations you can do are four, um, is it four length, perimeter four length, four times length? Well, if it was just a rectangle or a square, that's what you would be saying, is that so you're going to go around four sides. But the, uh, the concept of perimeter is just adding. Okay. Plus, S plus, S plus, S plus the half times pi times diameter. Right. So you have to say, I, I figured out fence, fencing is diameter, or I figured out fencing is perimeter. Length width plus half by uh, R square. And you can figure out the circumference of the circle and take half, like Zoila is saying, because you just want to do a semicircle. So you've got this kind of shape. The 10 is over here, the 16 is here. So what you're saying is, I want to do perimeter, and that's going to be the top. I'm going to copy the 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the bottom, has to be 10. the Five left, Five. and then what? how do I figure out what goes on the right, right? So, so far, it has to be 5 then. You have to do, this is the rectangle part. Uh -huh. And actually, let me erase this part. Okay. So, Let's this see. is just the top, the left, and the right. That's the part that you're saying you would have added up four, but on the other side is a semicircle. The six, oh, yeah. five, two. Right? But the diameter is 10 too. Exactly, because that is what you're going to copy. So this 10 would be the diameter of the circle. So you're copying the 10 over here and saying that pi times the diameter whatever you use for pi, right? If you just use 3.14, then it's 31.4. If you use 3.1415, then you're just gonna move the decimal place one time. Mm -hmm. So now this represents what? Okay. The circumference of the whole circle? Right, so that's the circumference of the whole circle. So when you're doing the formula, you have to keep that in mind. So what you're saying is, I added up the 16 and 16 and 10. So my perimeter of the rectangular part is 42. I have 31.4 for my um, circumference, but I want to divide this by two because I only need a semicircle. So really the circumference part, you're cutting that 31 in half. Okay. Ish. So however you're, you know, estimating, right? Yeah. So these two are what you're adding up. I never I never So now what should you do? Add them together. Now you've got about 57.7. And now what should you do? The price. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So now you're saying, I know how much fencing I need, right? So this is why you're always predicting and staying in the story. Now, doesn't I don't see 
57 as A, B, C, or D. So that would also be a clue when you're like, hey, I know I got this answer, but it's not in my choices. What you're seeing in all the choices is the dollar sign. So you do need to now say times 12 as the cost per foot. So when you figure out the sensing around the top, around the left, around the right, and then you figure out the semicircle, that's actually the square footage. So you have a number of feet that you now have to multiply times 12. And predicting again, in your mental math, you're looking at 57 times 10, right? As an easy way to say, I should be at almost 580. So what does that do if you are predicting? When you're looking at your choices, if you say, okay, I got 57, point something times 12. You can drop the two and just say times $10. This is kind of like the stuff that you, you might already do in the supermarket <laughs> or if you're shopping at Home Depot. It's easier to multiply times 10. So you know that you should be at, five, that at the um, 580 mark. And then you're saying, if I had two more 57s, where would I be, right? So it should make it obvious which number you're gonna pick. So it's gonna be 690. But you can still do the calculator. And say that you're picking out C. C. Now this is, you know, what we're, th we're th talking it out out loud, but what we're saying is I took a look at my measurements. I'm looking at the figure. As soon as I see the figure, kind of like we said about the triangle, if you're like, I see a right triangle, it could be the Pythagorean theorem that I need, depending on what they ask me. Because all of those kind of internal questions help you focus. So when you're looking at this community vegetable garden, the first thing you're thinking is it's not a rectangle. So I wonder what they're going to ask me about, but I do see a measurement of, you know, the right, the left side, and I see a measurement of the bottom. When you, the first word is fencing, you want to be thinking perimeter. Now you're thinking, okay, I need circumference and I need perimeter of a rectangle. So this is what's going to make you copy the 16 on the top because perimeter is adding. But then, like we said, the, the actual question is not about how much fence you need, but how much it would cost if it were $12 per foot. So this is how you're adding another layer to the question that makes it be a thinking question again. Like we were saying before, it's not just arithmetic, but it's now how are you gonna apply the arithmetic that you did? So now this same garden is in question number two and saying that one bag of organic fertilizer contains enough fertilizer to cover 375 square feet. The head gardener wants to fertilize the entire garden three times during the summer. Which statement or statements are correct? B. B. B, B and D. B. I say B. Let's say B and D. B. <laughs> Let's see here. If the garden bags, two bags, fertilizer, yeah. I think it's B. Um, it yeah. is B. B. D. So let's see, you have to figure out the area of the shape. So what did you come up with as the area? 238.50 square feet. So 
So let me work this one out. The same, you know, measurements apply, right? So we've got, we already know our two shapes. One shape is a semicircle and one shape is the rectangle. So if you say that you have the shape, you have to figure out the rectangle, which now this time, it is going to be the 10 times 16. So how much is 10 times 16? 160. So you've got the area of the rectangle. Now you need the area of the semicircle. So this is length times width, and this is pi r squared. So what would the radius be? Five. Five. So five times five is 25. Somebody said the door, I'll be back. And then Don't forget you're taking half. So when you go, I'll use the calculator. If you say 3.14, you should have 39.25-ish for your semicircle. So you've got 160. Plus 39, and you can just drop it down to 39 if you want, but you have 199. So now saying that this is how big the garden is. You want to do the garden three times. So you want to say this times three. So you're going to need enough to cover 597 square feet. So this is the footage and then times three times. So now you're looking at all of the questions. So let's analyze the questions with this number in mind. So A says one bag of fertilizer will last all summer. We already know that that's not true because we came out to 597. So just doing, uh, trying to do 597 with a bag that only has 375, A is gonna be eliminated. Now we're saying if the gardener buys two bags of fertilizer, He'll have some left over at the end of the summer. B is definitely true because we know that we came up with the number 597. Two bags of fertilizer is going to be 375 times two. So that's going to give us 750, which is more than enough for the 597. C is saying there is more fertilizer than needed for the summer in two bags. So the gardener needs only buy one bag which we already know that's not true from eliminating A. Mm -hmm. So now D, by fertilizing only two times during the summer, the gardener can buy one less bag of fertilizer. So now what we're saying is if we took that 199 mm -hmm. um, number and multiply it by two instead, you're going to get to about 400. you still need to buy more than the one bag. So I think that that one might be confusing the way it's worded.
because they're still talking about the one bag of, of fertilizer. So I think maybe it shouldn't have said one less because <laughs> it's not really comparing to anything. It's just talking about the one bag of fertilizer. So I think that you're, you know, approaching these in the right way so far. So mm -hmm. I'm imagining that the next two are a little bit, you know, they're not, they're the solids. So you need to have the volume and surface area formulas out for yourself, but you're going to do the same thing. Um, so number three is a toy house. And we're talking about um, painting the house. So which formula is that? They're kind of telling you already in the description that you need to do the surface area. But you have to make sure that you're subtracting the right parts because it's a composite solid. So of course, you're not going to have a bottom to the pyramid and you're not going to have a top to the, the rectangle. So if you're going to paint, you're now only painting the four sides at the top and the five sides of the bottom. So then number four is volume. And this one's kind of a, a so what the answer? Well, I'm not going to say the answer for this one because this is your homework. What is the answer? I'm not going to say the answer. <laughs> I don't know why. You already did. Did I say B? No, no, we're on looking at we're looking at number three. B is the right answer for number two. But we're exactly. looking at the, at the homework. So I'm just saying what to be mindful of as you approach three and four. So now number four, you gotta do both the volume and the surface area. So number three and four is your homework. If you haven't finished looking at Aztec, then you wanna keep working through that too a little bit. So the goal is to finish that section this week that is about composite figures and just do a little bit every day towards that so that we can um, close out geometry maybe like in another week. So we're still gonna do the task exercise book, but because we're coming to the end of the chapter, you wanna make sure that you've made it that far down in Aztec. So we've done Pythagorean theorem, we did uh, geometric measurement, now we've done some solids, and now we're on the composite figures. So you wanna make sure you have at least made it through all of those drills. So I don't want you to have too much homework for um, just this handout or this PDF. Tomorrow, we're going to go over the answers for three and four. And we're going to look at the skill practice, which there's only six questions. So that shouldn't be too bad either. So the other thing mm -hmm. that is on for today, um, is for science. So I haven't added the writing assignment yet, but I'm gonna go over to the science just so that you can see what it is. 